Um, right, let's speak to Richard. Good morning, Richard. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, do kids have it harder these days? Well, I think one of the things that's not in their favour is the almost sort of obsession in Scotland and Scottish education with children's rights. The Scottish government thinks equality is a, a, a real major priority. So part of their equality agenda is that kids should be treated equally with adults. Kids should be treated like adults. So instead of the proper relationship of adults having appropriate authority over children and children accepting that adults have got authority over them at school and within the family home as well, Instead of that, children are taught, you know, you've got rights. No one's got the right to tell you what to do. Everything should be negotiated together. And I think ultimately, that doesn't make for the most positive relationship between adults and children. Uh, and I think that undermines the well-being of children. So you think the relationship should be more dictatorial? Uh, I think that's a ridiculous term to use, and that's nothing like, remotely like anything I suggested. What I said was appropriate authority. Now, okay. I, think, uh, I think over... Well, well explain uh, to me what appropriate authority is, then. Appropriate authority um, is that there are many situations where adults basically can make decisions on behalf of children and can say to children, look, this is the way it's going to be. You, you, know, you might not understand So you would dictate to them? Again, that, that's ridiculous terminology. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's, OK, so a teacher might say to a child... Uh, you're not allowed to do that. I'm not going to have that behaviour in my class. Would you say that's dictatorial? Well, it, it is. I mean, you know, you, you can... Is, you, so you're saying that teachers shouldn't have the right... No, 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 I, I'm just talking about language. I'm just talking about language. Yeah, but see, I, immediately I've come on with a perfectly reasonable point and you're trying to push me into ludicrous language. You're trying to almost mock my point by rephrasing no, it in ridiculous language. You don't do that to other people that, that phone in. I mean, the, ch the previous chap, who was entirely on message with the Scottish government, it was just, oh, tell us what you think. Oh, yes, that's very interesting. Hang on, Richard. You're mocking it immediately. I'm not mocking it. Richard, yes, Matthew are. Hussey is a public affairs manager of the Children's Society who's published this report. I was asking him about his report. I questioned his figures because he said it's 5% of uh, the number uh, of 10 to 15 year olds we have and I said does that really constitute a national scandal there are many other people who would say that it wouldn't I also asked him if really what we're talking about here is a snowflake generation so we're having a conversation and, and really I will step away from that word dictatorial it factually is correct but if you're uncomfortable with it then of course no, no, I will no, no, not no, use it's it it's not factually correct it's throughout human history and the vast majority of people today understand the principle that there is a proper authority that adults have over children. It's obviously it, it's relative to the age, etc. It, it's not absolute in, in, in various ways. But as a basic principle, that's very important. It's very important in schools. It's very important in the family home. That when it comes to what's acceptable, what's not, what's going to be allowed and what's not, the parents and teachers have a degree of authority. And I think that's the way it's supposed to be. And that's what children need as they're growing up. That's what provides them with a secure and stable environment in which to develop. And if that's eroded, which is what's happening with the emphasis on children's rights, which effectively is undermining adults' rights, um, then I think that's not the best environment for children. OK, all right. Please well, let's listen. please stay there. We've got Jane Evans, who's a childhood anxiety and parenting expert. Good morning, Jane. Good morning. Good morning. Would you agree with Richard that in some ways, um, you know, we have put added pressure on children by giving them too many rights and, and not giving them firm enough boundaries? Is that a decent way to explain it, Richard? Uh, yes, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Jane? OK, so ch children don't have rights. That's that's the problem. They don't have rights. I mean, in the in England, I'm, I'm sad to say, I don't know if it's gone through in Scotland yet, but children can still legally be hit by their parents. So I don't know that, where that's the That's legislation that we're in considering that. in Scotland. It is as yeah. yet undecided. Yes, I thought it hadn't gone through. I would have been celebrating. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, but, you know, children just don't have the same rights. What is happening for children? But, but what is Richard is saying is that, that children shouldn't have the same rights. They should have the confidence that the adult authority figures in their lives will make decisions for them in their best interest. Well, hang on, let, let, Richard, think... Richard, do you want to explain it to Jane? Because I don't want to put words in your no, mouth I've, here. I've, I've, I've yeah, and the, the smacking yeah. bands, I, mean, I won't go into the smacking band in particular, but the philosophy in Scotland is they're against punishment full stop. I mean, in Scottish schools, the, the education in Scotland is in the process 
of eliminating punishments from schools and replacing them with sort of soppy therapeutic restorative practice. I mean, I think this is this is extremism. The idea that children don't need to be punished, I, I think, is quite outlandish. For the vast majority of people. Uh, throughout human history and throughout Scotland at the moment, do believe that there are circumstances where it's necessary uh, for children to be punished. So that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with the children's rights agenda, the sort of anti-punishment sort of agenda, is quite extreme. OK, can and we let Jane respond to that? Uh, Jane, would you like to respond? OK, well, fortunately, what is happening in Scotland, and I have spent quite a lot of time working in Scotland, is that there is a growing awareness of the harm that is done to children by punishment because um, there's been a big push on the Adverse Childhood Experience Study to be understood and the levels of trauma that children experience to be understood. Ironically, your next piece afterwards is about drug use, which, again, in Scotland is you know, that really horrendous level. So this idea that punishment works, we wouldn't have our prisons full of prisoners if punishments work. Punishments punish. They cause emotional emotional and physical pain to children. They do not teach them anything. When you look at the neuroscience we have now, not the old stuff that punishments are linked to, which is rats in boxes pressing levers. Right. Uh, uh, the that's, that's science that we have you. now, Richard, that, that's the science ridiculous. that we have now, it's not ridiculous, it's science. It's neuroscience, it's neurophysiology, it's neurobiology, no, which you are tapping into in Scotland in a way that we are failing our children in England. And right, you okay. are saying yeah. in Scotland... Okay. We yeah, are going to use the modern science to actually support children and to teach them about behaviour and to teach them about emotions so that they don't go on to have the levels of trauma that are currently rife throughout society. Uh, OK, well, what I think that I, I'd like to thank you for confirming my point, because some people might have heard me say there's a lot of people who actually believe that all punishment of children should be abolished. And people might have thought, no, he's sc- no, no, hang on. People might have thought, no, he's scaremongering. But thanks for sharing that it is actually true that people in with um, influence over the lives of children in Scotland, they do have this really extreme philosophy to do away with punishment. But I think the idea of punishment is probably that it, it deters uh, misbehaviour, it helps, it helps children to uh, develop, and I think that, you know, the huge majority of parents would be saying, yeah, I, I think sometimes some sort of punishment is necessary. Well, listen, just just to bring in another voice on this. I mean, I know we've kind of gone 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 away from our original um, question, but but Nicola Crean, um, who's been listening very patiently, who's a, a mum of two as well as working with kids, um, your thoughts, Nicola, on on punishment? Hey, oh my, I'm, I'm actually cringing at the moment. What are you cringing listening, about? Listening to Richard's points, why um, seething? Because it's just it's just it's so outdated. You know the point that there are ladies, so I didn't catch a name there. Um, a Jane who's yeah, a parenting yeah. expert. Yeah, she, she, the point that she made. You know, I am dealing with so many adults now who are suffering from trauma because of things that have happened in their childhood with this, this ridiculous um, concept. You know, it, it's, it's, it's so outdated. This is, this is the reason why our country is in the state that it's in. But, I mean, do you, never, do you never punish your children? Well, I don't punish my children. No, I, I think there's a difference between punish and discipline. I don't even like that word, punish. Children, children need to be supported and loved and cared for, not punished. How would Richard but like to be if he was punished is and somebody just slapped care. him the next time he was rude to somebody? I don't think he would like it. I, I just I completely disagree with his points. And well, I, the, whole, and the whole point of really punishment is that you don't like it. it. Excuse me. No, I, I'm speaking now, Richard. And the, I think it's ridiculous that, um, the, you know, the points that you've made are just, they're, they're so outdated. Can you, do you not understand the reason why the country's in the state that it's in? The, the, the kids are suffering. We need to do something about it. I mean, but if, if your child was very badly behaved in the classroom, let, let's just say that, it was rude to the teacher, refused to do their work, um, swore at the teacher, attempted to... 
um, I, I don't know, rip the pictures off the wall. I'm just trying to kind of paint a picture yeah. of, of kind of obvious misbehaviour. Should yeah. they not be punished? That's a child that's suffering, Kate. Children that be- behave like that are already suffering and probably getting punished severely at home. There's, 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 there's issues behind that. When a child behaves like that, that's when children yeah. really need the extra support and the love because that exactly. child is suffering. Well, that Richard, I know you're not going to agree, but would you like to respond? Uh, certainly, well, I mean, what we're hearing here is the philosophy, the extremist philosophy. It's not extremist. We need to stop using that word. Okay, let's just let Richard speak here. We need to stop using the word extremist. It's the idea that no matter what a child does, no matter how naughty they are, they don't deserve punishment because there's what you really, really need to do is just talk it through and find out what's caused them to do it. And I think it's just not the case. Sometimes adults and children, they know full well what they're doing. They're trying it on. They're, you know, they're just being naughty because they think it's going to be fun or whatever. And the appropriate response is punishment. And I think it, it's yeah, only it's okay. a really well, extreme position. Work with children. Let's, think let's, the, let's, think let's adult have society, a bit more air time. Uh, okay, all right. We've, we've got time. Jim. We've got time, Jim. We've got time. But, but Richard, yes, we, we probably will close this little conversation to, to to an end just now because I also want to uh, bring people up to speed with what's happening at Parliament because of very dramatic news that we've we've heard this morning. Um, but Richard, can I just ask you a final question? If you don't mind, just just very briefly, yeah, in I terms think. of our opening question as to whether or not children these days um, have it harder than previous generations, um, what would your response to that be? Uh, my response would be that I think it does make it more difficult for children if they're not treated like children. Right, OK. Uh, because if there's not the appropriate relationships with adults, then, then that undermines the development okay. of children. So it's hard for them, but it's hard for them because of a breakdown in authority. I um, that's one of the reasons, OK, yeah. all right. Reason, yeah. Richard, thank you very much. Uh, Jane, I appreciate that you want to uh, speak more about that.